Okay, well, hello once again, fellow flight simmers and cockpit builders. Well, finally, it's time again to do the very first of the updated Back to Basics series on SimVim X. Um, I struggled for a very long time on how to start this series again because uh, those of you who had watched my previous videos in the past know a little bit of the history, what happened you know, a couple of years ago. Uh, so along with that note, I would like to first stop start by saying that I am not affiliated with SimVimX or Real Sim Control. I do not uh, have anything to do with them. I don't represent them. You know, this is just me trying to help out the community on how to use this amazing system to build your home cockpit. Um, so I'm gonna go over a couple parts in this video. Uh, I'm gonna go over what is SimVimX, uh, what kind of uh, components you can use with it to build your home cockpit. And then I'm gonna go over basically how to install it. Um, although if we go to the website here, we can see the website is very well laid out. It is it is a trove of information and I highly recommend and I always tell you guys to please always read everything on the website. Actually, they do an amazing job of uh, explaining everything, uh, laying out all the technical information and everything you really need to know is on the website. Everything that I learned how to do with it, I learned it only by reading the website. Um, I had very little previous electrical experience or electronics experience, and I have very, virtually no programming experience, which is great because you don't need it for this program. So basically, SimVimX is an interface program to communicate uh, real world buttons and switches and displays and encoders and potentiometers and all kinds of stuff with the simulator. So it pretty much consists of, of four parts, as you can see right here. There is a plugin that goes inside of the Explain uh, Resources Plugins folder. Then there's the firmware that you flash onto the Arduino. And uh, this uses no libraries, no, you know, it's not like a normal Arduino sketch. It's a custom written program that they wrote. And you just basically flash it onto the Arduino itself. So you cannot edit it or do anything with it. Um, then there's the, the interactive configuration tool, which is pretty much the website. So instead of using a standalone program to uh, do all the configuration and all the parameters and changes that you need to make to the assignments that you make, everything is done on the website, uh, which at first I was a little bit wary of because I always thought, what about if the website disappears? You know, we're done. You know, you, whatever configuration you had up until that moment, that's pretty much what you got and you wouldn't be able to do anything else with it. But, um, at the same time, it's kind of good because then they can keep updating it constantly. And if there's a bug or something, they just fix the website and it's done. You know, you just go back to the website and you're already using the fixed version of it. You don't have to actually download anything again. And then uh, there is the SimVim panel software, which is basically like a separate software program that you can run on Windows, on Mac, on Linux, and even on Raspberry Pis to display instrument panels on other monitors. So you can basically network link uh, even old computers and laptops. They don't have to be very powerful according to what they say here. Uh, and you can use it to display other uh, aircraft instruments on other monitors. And they're constantly making more panels available. And so what are the advantages of SimVimX compared to other solutions? Those of you who have seen some of my other videos probably already are sick and tired of me saying this, but I still highly recommend this as the easiest solution to making a home cockpit, getting started. Um, so this is like point and click. You know, I'm not going to go too much into all the fine details because I'm going to be explaining that in the future videos in this series, um, but it's pretty much point and click. You just select what uh, parameter you want what function you want for a certain button, switch, or display, or whatever. And then you put it on whatever pin you have connected that device to on your Arduino. And then you save the configuration, and that's it. You're done. And like I said a little while ago, there is absolutely no programming skills required for this. You do not need to know one lick of programming in order to get this working. The only thing you do need to know is uh, if you do use custom airplanes, which I'm pretty sure most of us do, uh, you do have to do custom conversions for the parameters that don't work straight out of the box. But we're going to talk about that in future videos as well. 
All right, so if we go to the hardware page up here and we go to the system structure page, you can see that they lay out exactly how all the connections and wiring is done. Uh, right here on this one, they actually show all kinds of different uh, button switches, displays, LEDs, encoders, potentiometers are connected to the system. But once again, I will go over that in future videos. Another good thing about this system is that you do not need any expensive modules or L, uh, PCBs or anything like that. Everything is done using off-the-shelf, basically little electronic parts, electronic modules, which uh, we will cover also in upcoming videos, depending on which kind of a uh, device you are trying to connect. So we will go over all that. And uh, basically, that's it. You know, that's pretty much the whole system. Now, as far as uh, using the components to to make your you know flight simulation home cockpit here, so basically. Everything starts with the Arduino Mega 2560. That is the heart of the system, and you can only use one Arduino Mega. So one of the questions I get asked a lot, even though it's one of the very first things you will read on the website, is that you can only use one Arduino Mega. But that one Arduino Mega will allow you to connect hundreds of devices. Uh, one of the great things about this system, and one of the things I consider the magic, is that we can use multiplexers. So these little boards up here where that I have a MUX output and MUX input, these allow you to connect 16 devices using only one pin on Arduino. And as we go through the videos, you'll notice and you'll realize that one of the very first things I try to teach is that you, you have to use um, multiplexers if you plan to make anything even uh, remotely complex. Because even if you were just to use a couple of LCDs or seven segment displays, you are going to need to use the the data and address bus pins and you're going to need a way to branch off of them you know so the the best way to do this is what i did here is i basically did a, uh, a distribution board so that i can branch off to as many input and output multiplexers or displays and all that that you need to connect all right so as we can see in the picture here you know you, you can connect uh toggle switches uh, rocker switches, push button switches. Uh, I have a potentiometer right here. I have a multi position rotary switch, uh, stepper motor right here. And this is another type of uh, switch right here. And then we got uh, LEDs. We have servos. Uh, we have seven segment displays. Uh, you can use um, TM1637s, uh, four or six digits, and you or you can use. Uh, Max 7219s, but those uh, the only ones I've been able to find is eight digits, but you can make custom ones. And I'm pretty sure you could probably find three or five digit ones, but you, they're going to cost a lot more probably. They're not very common that I've been able to see. And then you can use uh, character LCD displays as well. Uh, these do not use the IC2 method of connection. It's a little bit more complicated, but um, they work very well. Oh, and then I got sliding potentiometers over here. Another thing that is very uh, flexible as far as expansion is concerned for this system is that you can use an Arduino Uno or a Nano uh, to connect. Uh, actually, I have a Nano right here. It's a tiny little board. Uh, you can use those to connect a stepper motor controller, which will allow you to connect uh, more stepper motors. Actually, you need to use that one for those. Uh, servo controllers and uh, LCD controller so you can connect more displays if you need more than what you can connect directly onto the Arduino. And on the next video, which I plan to call um, Arduino pin usage, I'm going to go over what pins you can connect all the different types of devices and uh, all the different expansion options. So there is a ton of stuff you can connect to uh, SimVimex with Arduino Mega. and I've seen people, even though my cockpit, my setup, which obviously, if we go back to the backdrop right here, um, you can see that I have I have quite a few buttons and switches connected to my setup. Um, you've seen my previous videos. You've probably seen this setup already many times. All right, that's a pretty much a basic idea of all the different things that you can connect to it. Now, I'm going to go over some quick numbers here just, uh, just so you can get a rough estimate because I think a lot of people are under the impression that because you can only use one Arduino Mega that you're somehow limited to how much you can connect to it. Because I know that, for example, Mobiflight, you can use a ton of 
Arduino Megas uh, for different things, you know, so uh, that's probably where that idea comes from. But I know people that have built entire 737 setups with this system and it works fine with only just one Arduino. So now, um, uh, one more thing I forgot to mention is also if you use a uh, Uno or a Nano, uh, you can link it up as a matrix, as a, it's a button matrix pretty much. And you can connect up to 176 more buttons just in case the eight or 900 that you can connect using multiplexers was not enough. So just to give you an idea, you can connect up to 59 inputs directly into the Arduino. That's without even uh, using uh, multiplexers, which for every one multiplexer that you use, you can connect 16 uh, inputs. Um, as far as analog inputs, you can connect also 16, which are labeled A0 through A15 on the Arduino. And you can use one more analog input multiplexer. So that'll give you an additional 15 analog inputs. I think probably we never rarely need more than 16 anyways, but the option is there if you need it. And you can connect uh, technically up to 16, 60 LEDs, 60. But in reality, you could only connect a few of them directly to the Arduino because you need to make sure that you stay under a certain amount of power draw or current draw through the Arduino or you might damage it. But that's where DM13A, LED drivers, and other methods for LEDs come in really handy to connect tons of LEDs. All right, so seven segment displays, you can connect up to eight of them directly to the Arduino. But if you use an output multiplexer for each one of those, you can connect 16 more seven segment displays. Uh, for LCD displays, you can connect up to 22 directly on the Arduino. And if you use a uh, daughter board uh, as an LCD controller, you can connect 12 more. And pulse with modulated devices, you can connect up to 15 directly to the Arduino. But you can also use uh, TLC's 5947 which will allow you to connect more. And I believe you can connect a total of eight of those. Those are for the coil gauges once again. So yeah, so as you can see, there are very, very many uh, expansion options with this system. So now we're gonna go back to the website and we're gonna go to the downloading and installing part of this whole thing. All right, so you go to the main page here and you go to plugin, and this is where you're gonna find the plugin right here. So you always want to download the latest plugin, which in this version is 221A, and you also want to download the latest Simvim X DAT file. All right, so we're going to go ahead and click on the plugin first. Um, I think I put, I made a special folder here called Temporary Downloads. I'll go ahead and save that. And that is a zipped file that it comes in, so we're going to have to unzip it. And then we download the latest DAT file as well and I'll put it in that same folder that I just created. All right, so now if we open up that folder, <clears throat> we will have to unzip the SimVimex file. So basically I'll unzip it, and then I can get rid of this one here. Yes, yeah, so inside the SimVimex folder, oh, there's gonna be another SimVimex folder. So you'll notice that you get uh, these two folders uh, for 32 bits and 64 bits, and I'm not sure exactly what this is, is one of the main parts of the system and then the conversion folder which comes with a t uh, tbm 900 uh, custom conversion file already in there uh, and then you got the dat uh, file which actually was on the 23rd of uh, april so first thing i'm going to do is i'll come back over here and i will put this file and put it in here and replace the old one and then I'm just gonna take the entire SimVimX folder. I'll just copy it. So you go to wherever your explain folder is and you go in there, you go to resources, plugins, and then I will put it in here. So I'll just right click somewhere over here and paste it. Okay, so now that it's pasted in there, you can see that everything is in there. All right, so now that we got all that done, I can go ahead and start my simulator here. Uh, so we can uh, show you how you flash the Arduino. I'll be right back as soon as this thing is finished loading because it takes a while. All right, so now that we're loaded up here in the simulator, we can go to the plugins folder and we can see that SimVimX is installed. 
So the first thing we need to do is open up the status window. Um, it normally opens by itself if you have this little check mark connected. Uh, but if only if you have the Arduino board connected. But since right now we haven't uh, flashed an Arduino board, well, we don't have one connected technically, right? So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the Simvimax IO hardware tab here. And this one will bring up this one here. So this is what you need to do to flash it. It's, it's it literally takes like five seconds. So it says make sure that the board you want to upload is disconnected and click continue. So I'm going to go ahead and bring up my overhead camera here. So now we can click continue. Now you have to select uh, which plug in the board into USB and select the software type. So this is where if you were going to flash an LCD controller, a stepper controller, a servo or a button matrix, uh, Uno or Nano, this is where you would select to flash them. But since we're going to do a master board, we basically just have to connect the USB cable and then wait a little bit so that it can get detected. And then you just click master. And if you want to use the USB version, you do not check this, but if you're using the the LAN version, uh, you click on that little thing right there. But basically, you just click upload and it'll do its little thing, which shouldn't take too long. And that's it, it's done. So now that it's flashed, now you can see that we have uh, that it says that the master board is connected with USB. And uh, by default, it comes pre configured with one input and one output. So that's pretty much it. You know, that's how easy it is to download and flash the Arduino Mega and now you're ready to start configuring uh, different inputs and outputs uh, whatever you want to do on your home cockpit so on the next video obviously I'm going to talk about what uh, the different types of pin usage that you can use because not all the devices can get connected to the to all the pins so that's going to be a very detailed video on that all right so hopefully this uh, video will get you going uh, if you had any ideas or thinking about building a home cockpit Hopefully this uh, gives you the little boost that you needed to actually get started. All right. And uh, thank you very much for watching. We'll see you on the next one.